Welcome to my new fermentation and brewing guide, my fellow Going Medieval fans. I am going to give you specific information on how these gameplay mechanics and relevant workbenches work since update 4. This will include info on all the stimulant, drink and food production, which requires specific temperature ranges and conditions to be crafted successfully. You will learn how to make wine, cheese, beer and similar drinks as fast as the game allows using a combination of differently designed rooms, temperature modifying items and construction materials. The whole reason to have stimulants in your settlement is to satisfy your settler's thirst, remove negative and gain positive mood modifiers which help get your settlers into a joyful mood. This guide will touch on many other connected mechanics like structural stability, settler skill requirements, animals, building designs, so I would advise taking a look at my previous guides on these specific subjects linked up here and down in the description. There you will also find my previous guide on brewing, which is still relevant if you play on Going Medieval's other game version called Legacy, meaning gameplay up to update 4. I think it is best we start and then go forward in the same progression you will follow in your own playthroughs. This means that your first interaction with fermentation is once you unlock the relevant tech for this mechanic in the tech tree. Once unlocked, it adds the fermentation station to your building menu. It should be constructed under cover and inside a room to boost its production efficiency, but it is not required for any specialized rooms nor does it get a bonus inside of them. At this station you can craft three different items, curdling milk, fruit juice and mash. Each requires exactly 20 inputs for one production cycle. Obviously milk for curdling milk, red currants and apples for fruit juice, while cabbage, barley, beets, carrots as well as red currants and apples and even vegetable rot for just regular mash. Since using milk for curdling milk to produce cheese requires animals to get the initial milk from and you do not have this when starting out, I will leave this section for last. As for fermenting fruit juice and mash, these you can produce early on especially with your red currants on a valley map. Do note that there is no cooking skill level requirement for these items, but you do have to have cooking enabled as a job for the settler who will work on this fermenting station. After that initial production process, you get a barrel of fruit juice or mash depending on your recipe selection and inputs, but do note that if you only use red currants for a mash recipe, you will get actual fruit juice. This item now goes into the fermentation process which is highly temperature dependent and whose final result can be rough wine, vinegar or dubious booze. Dubious booze is what you get from fermenting vegetables and can be distilled, but we will get to that. As I explained, the exact length and success of the fermentation process depends on the conditions in which a barrel of fruit juice or mash is kept, mainly the temperature. If you don't know, there are two ways to check room temperature. The first is to just hover your mouse over a floor tile belonging to that room and look up here in the right corner of the screen. The second way is to select an object inside of this room, then click on the room type name in its info card. After some experimentation, I have concluded that the optimal room temperature for fermenting fruit juice and mash into rough wine or dubious booze is between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius or 41 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, a barrel of fruit juice will turn into rough wine in about 3 in-game days while mash will turn into dubious booze. If the temperature goes above 10, 11 degrees Celsius or 50 plus degrees Fahrenheit, the whole process will slow down up to three times and even stop completely. It can even spoil and turn into vinegar, which you can currently only use for making pickled vegetables. If the temperature drops below 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit, the fermentation process again stops. Both the rough wine and dubious booze can be drunk but give no mood modifiers beyond clearing that negative one of not having any drinks. To actually get a positive mood modifier, you have to keep rough wine fermenting for another 30 days at the same temperature of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius and 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Some players reported best results with a smaller span up to 7 degrees Celsius 
but I did not see this happen. Important tip here is to set those piles of rough wine as forbidden so your settlers don't drink them while they are fermenting. At the end of this process you will get fine wine which gives settlers a plus 2 positive mood modifier when they drink it. Dubious booze on the other hand does not ferment further. Now obviously when you first unlock this deck and start fermenting fruit juice or mash you are in the early game and presumably do not have much or anything dug underground. This means you need an above ground room in which to store these fermenting barrels. Since the default game starts in spring and summer comes fast, the temperature requirement of just 5 to 10 degrees Celsius or 41 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit is really hard to maintain. Only for the first few days will you have low enough temperature to get that fermentation going even outside during some parts of the day. Constructing a medium sized room is not too much of an effort, be that limestone on mountain maps or clay or wood on valley maps but keeping the optimal indoor temperature will be a challenge. Clay walls and wood floors are very good insulators and will keep the heat out during summer days, but they can only do so up to a point. As outside temperature goes above 20 and even 30 degrees Celsius, meaning above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the indoor temperature will go far above 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and the fermentation process will slow down and even stop. If you haven't managed to dig enough room underground for both food and fermentation barrels, something I have a special guide for, link up here and below, you can try to use a kind of a hidden and even a bit of a broken gameplay mechanic. Windows, specifically open windows. What you do is to switch practically all the walls of the fermenting room with windows. Then you zoom in your camera, double click one window that selects all of them in your camera view and click here and set them to be open. This lowers the temperature in the room because the game works in such a way that an open window acts like a temperature switch and its closed state lets temperature go up and its open state takes the temperature down. But it doesn't actually let the air inside and outside mix. Multiply that temperature lowering quality by the number of windows you can add and voila! You have reduced the indoor temperature of your fermenting room. Do note, I cannot promise for how much longer this trick will stay like this and sooner or later developers will fix it. In case you need to ever increase the temperature to hit that optimal range for fermenting, close the windows or even construct a torch in the room. Now as you keep expanding and working on your settlement, you will eventually have enough room underground for a special fermentation room. This kind of an underground wine cellar has the main benefit of a much more stable temperature environment which you won't be cooling with windows, insulating with clay or wood, but at the utmost warm up with a torch in the normal conditions or a brazier in the extreme case of a winter cold snap. Digging out and building such underground rooms has been the subject of my building guide as well as a stability guide, so I won't go into these details here, link to the guides is up here and down in the description. The basics are a narrow corridor, digging out the room in a special narrow pattern which leaves pillars on the corners intact and to which wooden beams will be connected and provide structural stability. Once finished, you add a stockpile in such a room and set the priority to be higher than the one on which you had the fermentation barrels up to that point, selecting of course all the fermenting food and drinks in the stockpile options. I will now circle back to milk fermentation before going over to beer, ale and mead brewing. If you have found this guide helpful so far, please remember to like my video, comment on what topic I should cover in the next one and subscribe to see it when I post it. Fermenting milk starts at the fermentation station where one of your settlers brings 20 units of milk and goes through a short process on that station. Here you get a new item called curdling milk. Now to get that raw milk in the first place, you have to have domestic animals which can produce milk in a pen and a settler with animal handling skill and an animal husbandry job working on them. Currently the three milk giving animals are cows, sheep and goats. 
To learn all the info about animals and how to domesticate them, build pens for them, feed them and get resources from them, it's best you check out the two of my previous detailed video guides on animals and update 4 which introduced them, link up here and down in the description. That curdling milk item also needs to sit in a climate controlled room with a temperature range of between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius or 41 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature is optimal during that time, it takes about 3 days to become cheese. Again, the easiest way is to do this fermentation underground. Good tip is that cheese will keep fresh for a very long time and even has a good sales price with merchants. After playing a while longer, you will have enough books to unlock the brewing tech and with it the brewing station. This is where you can make honey mash which ferments into mead, ale mash which ferments into ale and with the addition of herbs to the same recipe you get potential beer. Just like you needed a settler with animal handling skill and an animal husbandry job for getting milk, again you need them to get honey from bees. This is what the item slash workbench cap is for. It is also unlocked at the tech tree, takes hay and wood to build and has no inputs. This is actually one of the easiest way, at least in the current version of the game, to produce a good drink for your settlers. A bunch of skeps, high priority for animal handling job and a lot of honey mash to ferment. All three of these stimulants prepared at the brewing station for fermentation take about 3 days to be ready for consumption by your settlers at the standard optimal temperature range between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius or 41 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Last workbench which has to do with alcohol is the distilling station and it too requires the use of the cooking job and skill. As an input you can use any of the fermented items like dubious booze, ale, beer, any wine and so on and it turns them into distilled alcohol. This item can be used for production of advanced healing kits. If settlers drink distilled alcohol they get a bonus 4 positive mood modifier named drunk and it also has high value with merchants. As for apple cider it seems to be missing from the game at the moment Fermenting only apples doesn't get you cider but rough wine. My guess is the developers will fix this soon. And that is everything you need to know about fermenting drinks and cheese in Going Medieval. If you have other subjects you want me to cover, tell me so in the comments and until then watch my other videos shown here as cards on the screen. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.